for the big three. Three charts, three stocks, three trades. We got you covered. Ben Lichtenstein will have us and, and take us through the charts. Joji Gay, Portfolio Manager, Rational Equity Armor Fund, takes us through his trades. Good morning to you both. Good Friday morning. Joe, how are you feeling about the market today? You know, I'm pretty optimistic. We had a little hiccup yesterday, uh, but ever since that Fed meeting, the market's really uh, been stabilized after a disastrous uh, August and September. Really nice start to November, or uh, September and October, so really nice start to November here. And you know, it seems like uh, the Santa Claus rally is on track, and it's all about these interest rates. All right, so that being said, let's get to your first one, which has certainly been a winner. It's hitting new highs again recently, and that is Microsoft. Um, your thoughts on Microsoft? Yeah, all favorite Microsoft had a tremendous year, really like the poster child of this big cap tech, AI driven, a lot of cash on its book, not really uh, hampered by these higher interest rates and really has been leading the market. We talk about the big seven. Microsoft is really the stalwart for me in that group. And yeah, I think it's just a fantastic stock. It's a stock that I own, a stock that we own for our clients and uh, I'm not going to be selling it anytime soon. Uh, if I were going to be in initiating a new trade today, uh, just given the recent run up we've had in the last week and a half, I'd look at the 360 put uh, just look at getting uh, selling that, looking for maybe a little bit of consolidation here over the next couple weeks here as we've had this tremendous run and then uh, looking forward to like a December, a nice rally through the end of the year. Right, understood. So you think this one really will help to lead us higher? Right now, today, it's at 367. Ben, take a look at the charts, please. Yeah, a tremendous run indeed, right, Joe Nicole? Uh, Joe just called it a poster child. Uh, for big cap tech, and I would argue that it's also a textbook example of what I like to look for in terms of trend, in this case, to the upside. Currently in a vertical phase, let me show you what I've got my eye on. First and foremost, as we get into the more granular time frame, in the recent run-up, Joe was talking about some of the strength we've seen. We rallied from 347 all the way up into, well, this week, as high as 367, but most of the activity you can see has occurred around this 362, 363 area prior to the recent run-up. So I want you to take a snapshot, a visual image of this chart, because we're going to talk about this a lot in terms of these three names we're going to look at here today. High conviction and then sideways consolidation, right? You get a well-defined trend up and then acceptance, basically. Now, take a look here at what I'm seeing on the way up, how the market has uh, kind of left us a couple areas to focus on as it pauses and then continues along its way. You've got areas of consolidation that Joe was talking about, which have continued to form at higher and higher levels. So we have a well-defined trend that's been established here. And I want to point to the fact that we are now vertical, breaking out of this balance here that we formed around this 362 level. This is, again, a high conviction phase here as we now seek a new area of value at a higher level, basically trying to validate the working assumption that we're trending higher, right? We're trying to further that uh, uh, process here, taking a look here at what's going on. Again, similar pattern, right? Bottom left, top right, high conviction in half of the screen, sideways consolidation on the other half of this chart here. Let me show you the areas of consolidation to call the formed along the way up. So you can see this is a daily candle chart. So we're basically broadening our scope here as we look. Now we're going all the way back to uh, the uh, move that we saw off the lows from last year, beginning of this year. And we were just looking at this move up right here, right, that we've seen over the last uh, few days here. I mean, this is just a small blip on this radar in terms of this longer term trend higher. Speaking of longer term trend higher, look at this. I pulled up a weekly chart here. This is one that really speaks to what I was just talking to in terms of that strength, in terms of this pattern, right, repetitious aspect associated with it and how there's no indication here that uh, the value or what we're seeing in terms of trend to the upside value moving higher, no indication that we've invalidated that working assumption that's going to continue to play out here. Wow. All right. So what do you think of that? There's really no indication of that. So it looks, looks been looking good, Joe, no doubt. Yes, sell it. Uh, they had like uh, kind of a tricky situation uh, with, um, with their recent, recent purchase uh, um, of, of uh, Activision. Yeah, really costly, maybe potential to save, but 86 billion. Most companies that might cripple them, uh, but you know they're just going to taking it in stride, and they have so much going for them going forward. Uh, this AI game, you know, they have they have the data, they have the software. They're right in the mix there for uh, for to take advantage of the new phase in the AI. All right, next up, Palantir, uh, year to date up 200 um, percent. Your thoughts on this one? 
this is a uh, good example of a uh, trade fuse with options. Uh, you know, I think they have they have some government contracts. They're not going anywhere. Uh, this security play is really crucial. And they also have this AI platform, uh, which I think uh, is going to gain and gain and gain in share. I think that that really is their their growth area. So for me, it's an exciting play. Looking back at the chart, 18 has been a spot. Historically, there's, we've seen some resistance. I think that's a good spot to look at some optionality. I look at January, I think it'll run through the rest of the year. So looking at the January 18 calls, uh, if we can break through this 18 area, it's looking kind of promising. Uh, I think there's a potential catalyst to get to that next level to the upside. Okay, um, so you just need some time for this to come through. Ben, your thoughts on the chart? Well, I'm not sure how much time you need on this one, Nicole, because it's actually attempting to, as we speak, to break out. You can see the chart behind me and how we've been relatively range-bound, kind of contained, but we're seeing some enthusiasm. Shares of ticker PLTR are now attempting to get something going here out of this range that we had been in. So you're looking back at price activity throughout this week here. We've had a pretty well-defined upper extreme around this 1920 level, pretty well defined low around 1770. Joe was talking about 18. I've got my eye on the 1850 area just because it's the middle of the range. So we're holding above that right now, attempting to get something going to the upside. That's very bullish in many ways. Again, you only get a limited amount of information on this chart because we're talking five minute candles, a contained trade, but attempting to break out here. Let me show you what's going on as we step back. The reason I'm sort of leaning into the bullish narrative, not only because of the breakout that we just looked at on the five minute time frame, but also because as we go back here now a couple weeks, you can see areas of consolidation that have formed at higher and higher levels in this instance formed around 1475 throughout last week. We broke out to the upside. We balanced around 1775 into the beginning of this week. But you can see how most of the week, again, that same pattern I talked at in the beginning of the segment has been playing out here. High conviction to the upside, sideways consolidation. And look at how we retested the 1775 area a couple times and it's held, right? So that's significant. That's very much supportive of this bullish pattern. If not already, the uh, uh, time frame that we just looked at, the five, the breakout, the uh, more intermediate in terms of the last couple weeks of price activity, but also this one, right? Supportive of that longer term trend to the upside. Setting our sights here now on this $20 level, the highs that we saw back in July, because again, we've now taken out 17, 18, uh, I think it's significant. Joe's looking at 18, but I was focused on 17, taking that out here now as we uh, open up the door for a retest of 20 here. But again, that same pattern we've been talking about, high conviction to the upside, acceptance, that sideways consolidation, all in all very bullish here. Another instance of a, a good example of these two phases of development, the horizontal, the vertical, and the horizontal and the separation and how we transition from one to the other. All right, um, what do you think, Joe, when you, when you take a look at Ben's charts there? Yeah, I think he's right. I think um, if, you could, if you have it, if you can zoom out one more time, look at like a three-year chart, uh, you know, it had fantastic run through the COVID era, we know that, but uh, there was some support at this, you know, talking about 18 to 20 area in that range. And I do think uh, since that area, with a little bit of a cup and handle, Breaking out above like a new high that we saw earlier this week, uh, that 1970 area, I think that would be uh, really significant for the stock, and it could uh, set the sights, uh, set the stage for a, a significant uh, run higher. Okay, um, and as you said, you really don't think these contracts, national security, government contracts, they're not going anywhere. Last but not least, well, you think that AMD has some catching up to do with the rest of the semis? How so, Joe? Oh, they're doing it today, but yeah, when I see, when everyone's talking about NVIDIA, I love NVIDIA, it's a fantastic stock, they've uh, had tremendous innovation. AMD does a lot of the same things as NVIDIA, it's a little bit, uh, obviously trading at a different level, that's for sure, but I think uh, they're gonna catch, they're gonna catch on to this AI wave too, they're gonna participate, they're gonna be able to sell some of this hardware, they have these servers, they have these fantastic uh, 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 drives, uh, they're, they're, they're not gonna have any problems with this AI thing, I think, I think they're gonna benefit to. I want to be on board uh, with these chips. I think uh, the chips are the wave of the future. We are going to continue to innovate and continue to go forward. We're not going back to smoke signals. We're not going to we're not going back uh, to, to that anytime soon. So these these chips are the wave of the future. AMD, I think, is a fantastic company, has fantastic brand, fantastic products. I think uh, they're going to be right in the mix with these semis. And I do think for the next six months, uh, while these interest rates seemingly have peaked, I think uh, I think I really like that space. 
Yeah, and a lot of big believers in Lisa Sue and, and the group overall. Um, so let's talk about this one, Ben. Your thoughts on this chart? Yeah, a well-defined trend up to say the least here, and I'd agree with Joe. We're not going back to smoke signals, but I also know where there's smoke, there's fire, and AMD has been on a tear. Taking a look here, first and foremost, similar pattern we've been talking about, well-defined trend up. You can see the two phases play out here, horizontal, vertical, the transition between the two and how as we establish the staircase to the upside, we can determine that value is moving higher and that, well, trend is we're talking bottom left top right and this is just on a five minute time frame we're talking about just a few days of price activity so let's not get too focused on this but we can establish again on the more granular just over the last few days here this week a big move up here and then also i want to point to how we are now attempting to break out of this most recent area consolidation a very short-lived range we established today look at this we are now vertical to the upside so if we can get something going here again the idea being that we're going to just kind of continue this pattern wash rinse to peat, the scare case, this higher highs, higher lows. There's a few different ways of looking at it, but all said and done here ultimately it leads to a trend higher. And taking a look here, this is one as we step back, you're going to see that similar pattern playing out here. Now we're going to back to the beginning of last week, adding on to the move up we were just looking at in terms of this week. And in this instance here, again, we just recently broke out of this range here around 114. Possibly you see something a little bit more overlapping, rotational, established, but you can see also the conviction associated with this move up as relative and compared to the overlapping rotational just kind of low conviction very random phase as we're balancing around 114 I mean you see it green and red candles stacked on top of each other relative to the high conviction green candles right higher highs and higher lows so this is a, a new initiative phase out of balance the upside again solidifying that working assumption taking a look here one more time I actually did step out on this one Joe all the way back to 2014 I didn't have it for the last Last one, but longer term chart here, you can see I didn't want to get out a, a magnifying glass and draw some of the areas of consolidation that occurred prior to 2019. But after that, look at this well defined call here. I'm, we are talking uh, easily. The, easily definable trend to the upside here looking at the fact that we're balancing around 105 here just got back above it you know what that does opens up a door for 165 those are the highs that we were talking about from back in 2021 highs higher lows i like that long chart going all the way back there thank you so much ben lichtenstein final thoughts here joe Tigay. i think it's uh, higher for longer might be the uh the theme there um i I trade there 115, 130 call spread in January is what I'm looking at. Just using some optionality, make it a little bit cheaper by selling that 30 call. Uh, I think I'd be very happy if we're over 130 by January. All right, Joe Tigay, Ben Lichtenstein, thank you both very much for being here for the big three.